juiced up fat with ketones involved. So you start your morning with fat and ketones, you start to get lit, and then by like 12 or one or two, when you wanna eat again, then it's like mazel tov, eat what you like. If you think food's healthy for you, then do it. I'm not gonna be telling you to stop. I just think that for performance benefits, whether it's cognition or actual athletic performance, starting your day with fat is the best way to go. Once you realize that health is the only thing that matters, everything else doesn't matter. I feel I have found a shortcut. Quick sound check. What did you have for breakfast this morning? It's made by a company named Helio, and it's called Dawn. Mic check, mic check. What did you have for breakfast? I had Dawn, of course. One more thing, a little protein bar. So my thing about the day after a cheat meal is I wake up really like carb dependent and I feel different. Yeah, it's stupid, man. Like cheating is dumb. Like everybody talks about a cheat day and it's like, why though? Don't feel as good. So we supplement. Greens, mangosteen, graviola, and fat. New client of Marknology, super excited about documenting our process of working with them. And hopefully by the time you see this, it's uh, going really well. So welcome to Marknology, and we're gonna shoot a few things behind the scenes on how to get our product on Amazon. I'm totally a novice, they're teaching me everything, so we're pumped about working together. I'll work on that then. You headed out down? Yeah, we got a meeting in Wichita tonight. So we're headed down, coming back. A little uh, happy bonus. Grab you all a leaf. So that um, shrivels up neurons that feed tumors. So it's one of those uh, secret ingredients. Yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Most definitely. Just have them dump like a spoonful. Okay, what do you think they're gonna say? Reaction time. Jack's got a wig on. Ralph's gonna laugh. It'll take a sec. Let me see. Let me do this. All right. Hi, Jack. Hello. Well. Ha 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 so yeah, we're using almost 100% Facebook. Um, it gives us all the insights we need. We also use uh, for the analytics piece to see kind of, since Facebook's a little limited, um, we use Scythe also, which is really cool. But they're just showing the, the, the want, because people like to be educated. I yeah. mean, it's, it's neuroscience. We feel good when we learn things. Yeah, yeah totally. Just how do you make it entertaining, engaging, and accessible? Yeah. Yeah, which is YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And native. Yeah. My name is Miguel Johns, uh, founder and CEO of KingFit. For people with diabetes, KingFit is a mobile application that delivers diabetes education to the palm of your hand for free. Unlike other diabetes apps, KingFit is the only application that allows you to press two buttons and begin learning from a certified diabetes educator. <laughs> you know, have you said it before? Oh yeah, it's on. <laughs> He's been working on a uh, amino acid thing, so it's kind of nice. like a 23andMe for essential aminos. And I mean, aminos are the building blocks of molecules, which are the building yep. blocks of cells. So if you can hack into aminos, you really can do anything. Very nice. It's Very the most nice. important, you know portion of nutrition is mm -hmm. aminos. This is gonna help us a lot, man. Like, it, it really gives us some, like, advertising direction yeah. that goes deeper than simple documentation, not the documentation. It just allows us to create content based on a specific demographic, yeah. saying, hey, we're gonna go talk about ketosis right now. We're gonna talk about plant fats right yeah. now. We're gonna talk about the difference between the five different types of saturated fat and why the only one that you really care about is lauric acid and mm -hmm. not butyric that comes from the other animal fats and stuff like that. So like, we can really go in on like education yeah. shit where we would lose you in a vlog, I think. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm pumped about, uh, I'm pumped about making some real, like, 
like focused initiatives, which yeah. is so badass that we can just do this and bang them out. So Man. I'm pumped. I'm just really pumped to see it and like know that it's completely doable because <laughs> it's simple. So it's so simple, and it's. I mean, it's right now. Our, everybody's asking us, "How are you guys getting content out so fast? How is it so high quality? How much is yeah. it costing you? Yeah. Can you introduce us to the production team who made it?" And we're yeah. just like, "We're cooking this up in the house." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking to them, boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! So very it's, cool. It's opened up so many doors for us, and we're actually going to change our vlog focus um, to start bringing value to startups to talk about some of the. Yeah. Like, hey, we use these tools and that type of thing because it's a different demographic. Yeah, because vlogging is like a, uh, it's almost like, it's like so much behind the scenes that it's mm -hmm. almost like less valuable to the customer and more yeah. valuable to uh, like uh, someone in a similar situation. Or like uh, in vlogs, I'm super owners. apt to talk about the entrepreneurial yeah. issues yeah. And, then the, and then we try and market it to the customer and there's a slight disconnect because yeah. it's like, man, I don't give a fuck about like exactly. your, you know, and supply chain nice. management. I want to make sure that my product's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we need yeah. to educate the customer on why the product's good and we need to educate and grow authority really about an entrepreneur space about yeah. why we're experts. Yes, sir. Or yes, at sir. least on our way to expertness. Yep. On the way to mastery. Yeah. 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 yeah, you? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. We're thinking about doing like a Wednesday to Wednesday, but doing an RV from here. So yeah. driving up from KC, doing like, doing the Red Rock show yeah. on Thursday night, and Our then friend. going to Utah, and then getting up there by Friday night, and mm -hmm. sold our first product in October, and just had to learn a lot, and figure out exactly what the market wanted, and how they wanted it, and some flavor stuff, some formulation stuff wasn't finished, but in the last like six or eight weeks, I think we're really starting to get it dialed in, like how we need to communicate it, and Obviously, the product formulation is really good now. Flavor and stuff like that affects. So it's been cool. It's been interesting. It's way different than anything I think yeah. we have done in the past, despite being in nutrition. Like, actually, yeah. like, creating and selling and promoting your own stuff is different than, like, being involved with someone else. Like, there's just a little bit more, like, responsibility and, like, it's been cool though. It's been really cool. I liked watching like when you were first starting your guys like process of making all this stuff. It's really cool. Cause I, I always thought about that. Like when you get like a supplement and stuff, it's like how the hell does this all come together? Like how? Far yeah, it's pretty it? crazy. How many different suppliers? Over a dozen, under two though. Yeah, fifty ingredients, fifteen different places. So that was like even difficult to yeah. create a system where we could like <laughs> be organized. How did you, like, just a bunch of testing. Yeah, the nutrition, it's kind of interesting. Like the nutrition was like, in a way, the easiest part. It was like, this is what we want it to be. Like we want it to be high fat, we want it to be good protein, we want it to be da 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 da, all these other things, nootropics, greens. And then it was like, okay, how do we flavor it? How do we get a hold of those ingredients? But like the concept has kind of been the, the constant. But then like figuring it all out was, yeah, just a bunch of testing, a bunch of different ingredients, probably multiple hundred ingredients that have come in and out. But now we've got it dialed in made you decide to do a, a breakfast thing? I th um, the biggest thing was like everybody supplements in the morning, everybody wants to wake up and feel good and there's no real supplement that's like food and all of it. So it was kind of scratching our own niche. Yeah, like I had a bad I, breakfast routine. It was just I've like... I've kind of like what you said over the years, just try and mix and match and stuff. And eventually I give up on all of it because it's just too much damn work. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you just had one thing, it's, it's a lot easier. Avocado, coconut milk, and some powder. You got a great smoothie. If you want to add toppings, make it a like cereal bowl, smoothie bowl thing. That works. Sometimes you just eat. I think my thing is the colder the better. So like put some ice and blend it up, and it's just awesome. What a day, last thing on the agenda, Omnicut in Wichita. How did we get here? We teleported. We went through Elizabeth portal. <laughs> uh, what do you guys have in mind for today? Yeah, whatever you want. We can 
freestyle, some cool looking stuff. Yeah, let's do some cool stuff, but well, this is a playground. So whatever you think that's uh, creative. Angles, baby. <laughs> Use that momentum, use the explosiveness through your hips to drive that tire up. Pick it up, hit it with the hips to push it all the way forward and then you just push it over because you have it up so high. So, boom, right? I can hit it so hard with my hips, it's gonna flip on its own. And then you give it that last little push at the end, finish it off, you pop right back into it, you get flying again. Course tight, you can hang out here all day. Walk those hands in, walk those feet in. There you go, get an extension, coming down. So while one guy's doing that, the other guy will be right here doing a farmer's walk. We are from Kansas, so we have to know how to do this, right? What's the one movement that you would recommend to anybody? Squats, deadlifts, kettlebell swings, those three. Probably in that order make this the last one. I know you guys have kind of a drive. Well, JB, like I said, this is where I live. This is my passion. <laughs> so we can do pretty much anything you guys want. Yeah, right on. Do you guys want to like, like, like flex the mirror for a little, like an hour or something at least, and then we'll call it good? Or... <laughs> or if the layers of your lower abs are ripping apart, that's perfectly normal. Two. One, good, other side, other side, come on. Finish it, you're so close. Control the breathing, control the breathing. Five, four. How hard is that, one to 10? 10? <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Very few people can do that on their first one. It's breathing, mind control, and of course you have to have a little bit of core strength. <laughs> but, <laughs> good, right there. Time, good work. How hard it is. What do you call that? I don't even have a name for it yet. Yeah, some sort of urban dictionary name. Jack, if you were to redefine BMI in your words, what would it be? Oh. Like, you can create your own acronym, but like, what is body mass index to you? Um, okay, well, I definitely think there's more factors that go into using BMI as one metric of overall fitness, right? So, the scale one metric of fitness, BMI, one metric of fitness. There's all these different compositions that come together to define overall fitness. BMI in general, of course, one great metric to say, yes, you're incredibly overweight, or you know, there's guys who have a very dense body composition that are overweight. Um, I actually read an article the other day on Matt Frazier and it says he's like obese or something, but yet he's the fittest man in the world. So how those two correlate, I'm not exactly sure. But the thing that BMI doesn't really take into account is, you know, how much muscle density you have, which yeah. is probably one of the most important things, all right? So it's all about that ratio between fat, between muscle, but then at the same time, for a lot of people like us, it's about what can you do with your body. To me, that's the most important metric of overall fitness. How can you move? What can you do? Um, and how can you relate all of this from the ground up and be able to use your mind at the same time? That's kind of a broad definition, but like no, BMI all, nice, in, yeah. all together. It's one, it's one metric in the formula of overall fitness. Very useful, very beneficial, but it's not the only one. You should never use just one metric to define your fitness. So yeah, that's my answer, coach. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jack Miller, originally from Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we're at OmniCup Motivational Fitness in Wichita, Kansas, um, nicknamed Black Jack. Instagram, at JackMillerFitness13. And if you were going to leave someone with a motivational quote, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good question. At the end of the day, when you look at in the mirror, you have to ask yourself, did I give 100% that day? Did I truly go in every aspect of my life, faith, family, spirit, in the gym, physically, everything, every aspect of your life, when you blend all those together, can you truly look at yourself at the end of the day and say, yes, I did go 100%. I'm, I'm now ready to go to sleep. I don't have to accomplish any more tasks throughout the rest of the day. I'm ready. I did what I needed to do. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to do the same dang, same dang thing. I love it. Period. End quote. <laughs> Jack Miller. Drop the mic. My homie. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thanks, Appreciate guys. The Good job. Good job. Good to see you. Very proud. Good stuff, brother. Good work, guys.